In the mid-60s, the people who had grown up with Asimov, Clark, Heinlein, and Gamble had come of age themselves and were starting to write science fiction. The authors of the mid-20th century focused on physics and chemistry when they wrote science fiction. These were the so-called hard sciences. They were not as interested in sociology or psychology, although Asimov does deal to some extent with it, and so does Heinlein in his later work. On top of that, John Campbell's very nearsighted way of looking at the world precluded any ideas which dealt with philosophy or theology. These strictures drastically reduced the ability of science fiction to grow as a literary movement. Luckily, the Korean War generation recognized the inherent value of these so-called soft sciences as well as philosophy and theology and began to explore those themes in science fiction, and we haven't looked back. Editors like Michael Moorcock and Harlan Ellison guided science fiction through this very, very difficult time in the 60s. This was a new wave of science fiction, something embraced by some of the older authors like Heinlein and rejected by others like Asimov. This was literature that was focused primarily on interpersonal relationships in cities and the tribe and culture as a whole. One of the most influential figures of this time was a man named John Bruner. Bruner wrote science fiction which was primarily about culture and about how the problems of the day can be examined better with science fiction. Like all great science fiction authors, he used it as a tool to abstract out issues he was interested in discussing and look at them from multiple angles. Like fellow great New Wave authors Roger Zelazny and Philip K. Dick, Bruner was not afraid of examining things from the most odd but most telling perspective. His wonderful novel, To Stand on Zanzibar, is about all the problems that he saw coming as a person living in the late 60s. These included overpopulation, pollution, a world thrown into chaos by collapsing empires, globalization, and an America which was shattered into a myriad of cultures, all of which were working in concert and against each other simultaneously. This should sound somewhat familiar for anybody who's been paying attention for the last 25 years. Unlike Heinlein, who sought so fervently and frantically to be embraced and respected by the youth culture, Bruner was able to speak to them in their own tongue. And the reason why is because he wasn't trying. He was speaking to them as he would speak to anybody and dealing with issues that were more eternal because they were focused on the soft sciences. They were more focused on issues that everyone could see in front of them and not issues which were arcane. Rather than using physics to drive the story, he used physics as a tool to express different aspects of the story, as any good science fiction writer should. The science became transparent. Technobabble disappeared behind conversations and events that drove the stories forward. The focus was no longer on the mechanical, but rather the sophant, be they human, alien, or artificial intelligence, or in the case of his Squares of the City, an actual city. This trait was shared throughout the New Wave science fiction authors, and it makes them much more readable today than the preceding authors, who, while in many cases are important to read and produce some good work, are not as uniformly good over the long term outside of their context. There is one caveat. While healthier than Highland's approach, Bruner's frank discussion of sexuality, which appropriate for the era, may not be something you want young adults to read. I recommend looking at it first and seeing if it's appropriate for your child. That said, as an adult, go for it. These are good books. Work your way up to, to Stand on Zanzibar, though. It's a little bit more arcane than the others. This has been Joseph Kadat for Old Sins Reviews.